Sid from Sid's Trains here, and I'm back from my trip to St. Louis, Missouri that I told you guys about on last Friday. I went down to St. Louis, Missouri to pick up a collection that I was given the chance to acquire, and after helping my family friend uh, dismantle the layout, uh, pack up the collection, I then went to the uh, St. Louis National Transportation Museum, and I show you a sneak peek yesterday uh, about that trip to the museum and the collection. And I also uh, showed two pictures about Menards. I was in the Midwest, and the Midwest is full of the store called Menards. Uh, Menards is a massive warehouse-style store, and by chance, they... They have an owner that loves model trains, and they produce O-scale model trains and buildings. They also produce some HO buildings and sell some HO trains, and I believe a couple other scales, maybe G-scale as well. And it's just so cool that you get to walk into this warehouse, and there's model trains on a shelf, or in most cases during this time of year, you have to go upstairs to their... Um, seasonal section and they have the model train sitting there. So I'm going to be saving the transportation museum and the uh, collection itself for a different video and in this video we're going to be talking about my trips to Menards. So currently you're seeing my pictures that I took at the Menard stores that I went to. I went to five different Menard stores while I was out in the Midwest. That might sound crazy but it was just such a cool experience walking into this massive warehouse full of everything you can think of and then there being trains in this random corner of the store. And each store had a little bit uh, different amount and different kinds of things in their train section. Uh, most of them had freight cars and all of them had buildings and everyone had uh, the main buildings they make and some others and building flats and some of them had the little cars that light up and then a majority of them had the freight cars as well and I went to each store uh, bought a freight car or two and then I also bought the big national power and light factory uh, as you see in front of you it's this very big factory style building and then in front of it I have all the box cars box cars I bought in my opinion, the best car that Menards makes is the box car. They have this uh, nice design to them. It's based off an old KMT tooling. They have die cast wheels and trucks, and they're just a nice, decent sized car. They're not full scale. I don't. I don't think they're full scale, but they're kind of like a standard old car where they can fit in in a full scale train, especially with the early steam era stuff. These are perfect for that. And that's actually why I bought them is because they look good with all the steam engines I have. Uh, just as a note, the Canadian Pacific car in the front is not mine. That is actually a car that I got for RJ from RJ's Trains. Uh, he is a big Canadian Pacific guy and he wanted to expand his uh, fleet some. So I picked, up, picked him up this car um, so that he could add another one of these box cars to his little fleet. And I'm also going to be uh, giving him this uh, Lionel Canadian Pacific 10-wheeler that I did a uh, short on. Uh, he and I worked out a deal, and he uh, purchased it for me after me restoring it. Uh, <laughs> kind of a long story there, but uh, it just goes nice with the Canadian Pacific engine I'm giving him. Uh, and it just will look good with all of his Steam Era Canadian Pacific stuff. He'll probably be doing a video on his channel where he opens up the uh, 10 wheeler, this box car, and another engine I have from him. Uh, but uh, moving along, let's go take a look at each item and then I'm going to take them out of their boxes. So, starting out first, I have these two Baltimore and Ohio weathered Sentinel box cars. Uh, sorry for the glare. My uh, little light is just uh, causing some glare on this plastic, but here we go. That's better. Uh, they are weathered. They have this nice uh, Sentinel. Uh, paint scheme on them with the Baltimore and Ohio, this really cool logo here. And uh, Let me open it up. I'm going to take my knife here and uh, cut through the plastic on top. There we 
go. Oh wait, <laughs> I didn't notice there's some extra tape on this end. There we go. I think there's even some tape on the ends as well. Nope, I got all the tape. Here we go. Set the uh, plastic aside, and here we go. You can tell it's a little weathered down along the edges. There's some brown. There's some brown up here. And uh, it looks really good. And on the bottom, you can get a good look at the chassis. This chassis is made of metal, which adds some weight to it. These are nice die-cast trucks. has some uh, frame detail here, this little air pump. Uh, it just looks really good, or some kind of tank pump. I don't know what it actually is, but it just looks really good. And I got two of them, so here's one, and I'll open up the other one. And here we go. I got them next to each other, and they look really good. The weathering is really nice. Uh, some of the weathering even, even goes down onto the trucks here. And it's really cool how they don't have the same numbers on the side. And they also don't look completely completely the same in the weathering. They're slightly different this side. Um, this one is more weathered than this side on that one. And if I were to turn them around, you could see the difference in the weathering. And the weathering is really good. It's this kind of sooty brown color. It's not too dark, not too light. It just looks really good and gives them this uh, used look. Of course, it's weathering and that's what it, uh, it's supposed to do. But overall, it just looks really good. Up next, I have this weathered Milwaukee Road Box car. So let me open it up here. And just like the others, it has a nice weathered look to it. Uh, there's areas where it's a little darker than others. Uh, the trucks have some slight weathering to them. It has its own unique number. And uh, I forgot to mention on the other ones, the doors do open, which is really nice. Uh, and they're just nice. They're a nice weight. They're not too light like a Lionel 64-64 uh, style that can sometimes be plastic with plastic trucks. And uh, they just look really good. The paint jobs are very nice on these, at least in my opinion. And there's even some uh, cool... Low, um, uh, signs on the doors and on the ends and there's even a brake wheel so overall just a really nice car and uh, let's move on to the next one finally I have this Mississippi export railroad box car which is really weathered tons of uh, rust streaks on it and it's this cool uh, yellow uh, color and I really like this logo over here so uh, let's open it up here And uh, here we go. Again, I just like these uh, streaks in it. Uh, it almost, some people might look uh, too weathered or kind of fake, but I really like the look of it. It almost looks like a bumblebee. It's kind of funny, but uh, it just, I like the paint scheme. I was uh, in the Midwest and in the South a little, so it was cool to get a Mississippi car. I'd say my only, uh, maybe criticism of this car, or my only thing that I don't like is that this one says built by Menards on the side, uh, 2015. Uh, Lionel used to do that, but they've now put them on the underside. And I think these would look better if that was on the underside as well. But overall, still looks really nice and it will go well with the rest of my Menards boxcars. And here they are all, all lined up. Uh, it's kind of funny that they're all weathered, but it just looks really cool. It looks like a well-used train uh, that's just been in service for a long time. And I think all these cars will fit in really well with all the other cars in my collection. And they'll go nice with the other two Menards boxcars I have. I have two uh, non-weathered Milwaukee Road boxcars in the brighter kind of Hiawatha paint scheme, uh, which is cool. And they just look really, really good. Uh, so now let's move on to the big item I got at Menards. So here's the big item that I got at Menards. This is the National Power and Light Factory. It's a power plant, and I really like that it's just this large industrial building. It has this operating sign on the side. It has lights all over it. There's some red ones on top, and all of these housings have lights that shine down. And it just looks so cool. 
They used to make a building that, that I believe was called the American Power and Light Factory. It was a tan color, uh, and it had a different sign on the side, but it did this. It was the same building, just in a different uh, kind of paint scheme. And I really loved that building, but they stopped making it, and then they started making this one. And when I saw this, I was just like, I really got to get it. And since I was at Menards and I saw it there, I was just like, might as well pick it up and. I will, I will be putting this on a, a siding on my layout. And since my layout's based around uh, coal, uh, it kind of fits with this because coal is usually how power plants uh, produce power. And I just think it will fit really well on my layout. And it'll be my first main building on the layout since I don't really have any other buildings. And this is not going to be the last Menards building I buy. I was looking at some others while I was there. And there will definitely be more in the future. But uh, let me open this up and then we can take a closer look at it. So I got the power plant out of that plastic container and now I can get a better look at it. Here's a view from the side. We got all these nice little housings that have lights in them. We have the doors down here which all look nice. This sign, I love this sign on side, it's such a cool design. We have the smokestacks on the side and we have some vents on top which look very nice. Even this little hatch here looks to be weathered some, which is really cool. On the side is the barrel jack for power, and then there's another one on the underside so that you can um, route the plug down through um, the table. On each side there's one of these doors, and these doors can slide out from underneath so that you can run a track through here, which is what I'm going to be doing. Over on this side we have these little... Um, Transformers here with wires, which look very nice. This is actually real copper wire, which is cool. And they have it wrapped around these terminals. We have some LEDs on top of there, which all look really nice. And uh, if I come around here, there's that side. And then there's also another uh, loading dock door over there. So I'm going to place this on the layer where I think I'm going to uh, have it, and then I'm going to show you that. So this is the area I think I'm going to be putting this uh, power plant on. I adjusted the track over there to be more curved. Uh, with the track being straight, uh, the, sh the building would hit the shelf that those Milwaukee road cars are on. So I decided to add a curve to it to turn the building, and not only does that allow it to fit, it also makes it so you can see the building uh, more easily and all the details. The sign is facing more outward. Uh, you can just stand right where I am and where the camera is and see that sign more easily. And you don't have to walk over towards my double crossover to see it. I think it looks really good there. It'll be its own little industry right there. Coal cars or whatever kind of uh, freight car can be pushed into that siding and can sit there and I think it'll look very good. And of course I'll be adding scenery around it, uh, making it fit in, uh, maybe, maybe some kind of uh, parking lot next to it, or a um, chain link fence, uh, something to just make it seem like an industry and less of just some random building uh, sitting in the middle of a, a random piece of land. Uh, but I think it looks really good there. Uh, currently I do not have any of the Menards power supplies. I need one for this building, I need one for the uh, lighted car that I have that I got a long time ago, and I also just need some for future buildings that I may get, so I'm going to be buying some of the individual ones and the ones that can power three buildings at a time so that I can have enough power supplies for any uh, current buildings like this one or future ones. So you'll be seeing uh, this building all lit up and in place in uh, my next layout update and I think it'll look really good when it's all illuminated and the signs like um, flashing. I really love this building. I think it fits perfectly right there and it's a nice addition to the layout and it is my first building on the layout which is really really cool. Uh, it's just a sign that I'm going to be doing more and more work on the layout, getting it going, adding scenery, and uh, making it look more not really complete, but more like a scenic piece of land and not just a uh, what I call homosote central with the uh, the uh, tan homosote on top. So I'm really glad with this purchase and the purchase of all the freight cars. 
I had an amazing time going to Menards. And uh, stay tuned for more videos on my Menards stuff. And of course on my trip to St. Louis. I'll be doing more videos this week. And possibly even a live stream. So uh, for now, I'm going to hook all these freight cars up to a, uh, an engine and run them around for a little. As always, like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. Comment below and tell others about the channel. I'm Sid, and I'll see you next time, guys. This is the dispatcher. You're cleared outbound. Over. Roger that. Cleared to the outbound. Here we go.